Rely on the open air as sources of light and ventilation. Our fathers, in this regard, slept on straw mats on the floor. Slept on what? Straw mats on okay. the floor. Straw mats. And if they urinated, you drained through the trenches, as you saw, to the sea water. And then, if you wanted to do the liquid solid waste, you do it at the edge of the wall, you sleep by the pool overnight until the next day when the domestic captives will come and clean the dungeons. You said domestic cats? Captives. Captives. Oh, captives. So they were the ones used to construct the castle. And then the commercial ones were held in the dungeons for shipment. Wherever you are, you can see some white markings on the wall. That was the number of the waste from the things. Those of you there, if you have a light, please show you that side. You see some white markings on the wall. That was the level of the waste. Poo poo, wee wee, vomit, sweat, oh, what have you. All these things were discovered 44 years ago. Just quite recently, after archaeological work was done here by a student body from the University of Ghana, Legon. Later, you see some of the shackles retrieved here in the main museum gallery. Once again, my name is Morgan Mason. If anyone has a question, please. So, yeah. Up until then, had it been shuttered and locked? Locked. Mm -hmm. Until such a time, you go out to have your little meal. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. until the um, University of Ghana came to do the archaeological, archaeological work. Yes, once the slave trade finally ended in British West Africa, that was 1833, the dungeons were shut or locked. And even till that, officers here, they didn't need, they stood there and threw them in. Remember, after the slave trade, the British were still colonizing us. Yes. Until 61 years ago, when we gained our political independence, Republican status three years later, is in 1960, before they left the shores of Ghana. So the castle door was open to public, but the influx of tourists we are having today was not like that by that time. People came in though, but that, those materials were still there until a research team came from the University of Ghana Legal Archaeological Department. They didn't understand why part of the dungeon they could see bricks floor. But the same dungeon, part of it, different materials all together undulated. Mm -hmm. So there was a need to find out why the disparity existed. Then they started digging at the edge. See? This one, that is the actual wood. See it? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, mixture of, the, mixture of everything mixed together. Poo poo, wee wee, vomit, and what have you. So, the shackles that we retrieve here, we have some in the main museum gallery. The rest were taken to Accra Museum. Nine years later, I must say five years later, in 1979, UNESCO designated this. And other fourteen castles of Ghana as World Heritage Site or Monument. And this is why they are open to public on commercial basis. Question. Hello. Was the dungeon in existence before the colonizers stole us and brought us here? Or was it built specifically for that purpose? Good question. Per the structure or the architecture of this area, many scholars believe that this was a purpose built. In the sense that when they compare these dungeons to that of the Elmina dungeons, yeah. Elmina dungeons were storage rooms where Portuguese kept their goods, bricks, what have you, to construct the first and second stories. Right. Later, that they converted those storerooms into dungeons. So it was a, a surface dungeon. But here, it's an underground. That's where it's coming. You know, we descend. Right. Right. So many scholars in academia believe that this was a purpose right. built for slave trade business. But the British will tell you no, it was to trade in gold, ivory, and other stuff. Mm. Okay. Any other questions? So when they, you say it was the Danes, then the Portuguese, mm. then the British. So it's the British who built this. 
Good. When Portuguese, Swedish, Danes, that were here, it was a fort, right. not a castle, at where we have the graves. <clears throat> so British developed it into a status of a castle, and it was built in stages. Governor A comes, four or five years later, he built upon it, he goes, another governor comes on and on and on and on, until they had a full-fledged castle. And records indicate that it took them between 60 and 80 years to construct the entire castle. So the fort as it is outside with the cannon and the cannon. There wasn't any cannon at the time. Okay. It was a small fortified building. Mm -hmm. But British expanded it to the castle and then established the arsenal, the cannons there, to ward off pirates, other enemies who will still want to come to the area because of the gold and human resource. And those were the same Europeans. Those right? were the same Europeans. You were in, you didn't want your other European competitors to come and enjoy the, the gold with you. So they established those arsenals there to fight them. And right. that they were able to hold on until Ghana's independence. The Dutch tried several times to attack them, but to no avail. Remember the Anglo-Dutch war, which occurred in New Amsterdam, 1665. Those people, the British Dutch officials were still fighting on our land over here. In both cases, the British defeated the Dutch. They're sitting on white devils fighting over land that does not belong to them. <laughs> white devils fighting each other to even take their own white devils I land. Have a so, what labor force did they use to build this structure? Labor force, our ancestors. Oh, so we are the ones oh, yeah. that Yeah, white people don't build them. They just sell uh, Labor force, our ancestors they use. While we were captured or while we were free? No, this, this castle was built concurrently when the slave trade was still in progress. So those that they bought at the initial stage, while some were being used to construct it, some were also being exported. So they were domestic, mm -hmm. which was being domestic used to do this. Domestic, doing the construction work and the commercial supplement. Oh, construction materials. Bent bricks here were initially imported from England. Later, they produced some locally. In between the bricks, the material made up of grounded oyster shells, limestone, and oil. So the engineers, the architects are saying that no cement iron rod used. Mm. Yes, 353 years ago. Let us move downwards. Careful watch. Just watch. Be careful on the ground.